Uh, Coach, you put so much emphasis on uh, retooling this offensive line. How did they do today? What did you see out there? You, you had mentioned that you felt good about that group uh, about a week ago. Yeah, it was a mixed bag. I mean, we um, I thought we ran the ball really well early on. I thought the heat got to us a little bit. It's been a hot camp now, and uh, I'm no excuse maker at all, but uh, we've we've gone several days in a row, and, and you can tell they're – they're, they're gassed a bit, and we, we're blessed to have a day off tomorrow. We get to watch the film later today and clean up everything that we see in it, hopefully. But they need the day off tomorrow, and then uh, we'll get into, after after next Tuesday, kind of get into more of a, a rhythm that hopefully we can have them. I take pride in making sure our teams are fresh when, when game time comes, and we certainly weren't fresh today. It showed, but I did think the old line – um, uh, functioned really well early on in the run game. Pass pro was pretty good too early on. Thought the defense dominated the latter part of the scrimmage. So I've said this all all the time, and it's hard for me to leave a scrimmage or a practice feeling great because one side does well. I worry about well, we're not getting it done on the other side, and vice versa. But um, I am very, very pleased with the want to, the desire, the leadership I see in being developed. Um, I'm, I'm encouraged as to where we are at this point in camp. Coach, talk about the uh, the receiver play. Uh, how, how are they coming along and, and who stepped up and uh, made some plays today? Had an incredible week. Not so much today. I uh, don't know if it was... Uh, Thought we had too many MAs on our um, RPO routes, choosing the wrong option. And we've got to look at us as coaches first and see what that was. Um, I mean, there were some, you know, some good plays. I don't know, you know, let's see, uh, looking at Kurt's stats, which I can barely read, but, um, um, you know, we, you know, we had guys that had some good catches today, but way too many opportunities in the RPO game that um, the quarterback made the right decision to throw the ball and a receiver is, again, I hadn't watched the film, but he's either loafing, which we can't have, or he chose to run the wrong route. And again, we got to look at us as coaches first on that and. and be sure we get that cleaned up. But this week, I, I thought we took a step forward in the totality of, of, of that room. Coach, what were you looking for out of your quarterbacks, and, and what can you say about how they performed today? Take care of the ball and, you know, play within the offense and, get, and take what you should take on a given play, that the ball goes in the right spot. Hopefully it's accurate and when we do throw it. and But accuracy – you know, hopefully will come even, but we got to take care of the ball and we have to be playing in the right space on, on given plays in our offense. And I thought all three did that fairly well today. And, you know, I know Robbie threw a touchdown pass and I think Holden did also. Uh, Peyton did not, had two and, um, I can't see from where I'm standing out on the field, the official ruled, ruled the receiver out of bounds, I think both times, but, um, uh, um, but they they all – we did not turn the ball over. That's uh, that's priority number one in offensive football, and so that was that was good. Obviously, defensively, we need to go get it. But I thought all three uh, looked, uh, looked good at times today. Uh, yes, Coach Freeze, um, in regards to the quarterback, um, is it a little bit tougher than you thought it would be to cut it from three to two now, or do you have a pretty good idea? Uh, yesterday, I had my mind made up, <laughs> and after today, I, I need to watch the film before I, I, uh, I say. Raise your hand if you have a question. I'll get you the mic. Uh, coach, talk about running back uh, today. Uh, pleased. Very pleased, pleased with running backs. I think. Uh, um, Brian showed up today in a big way. Damari had three explosive runs. Jarquez is solid, of course. 
Sean had some good runs. Jeremiah Cobb, I think, is going to be a really good player. He's just a, he's just a baby, but he's he's going to be a really good player. I, I'm, uh, I think we're, I think we've got a solid room there. Hugh, we know Cam Brown has been dealing with a little bit, and, and Var Johnson as well. Were they able to go today? No. Uh, let's see. I did want to go through the injuries and. Um, Steiner's been limited all of camp with a hamstring. Coy Moore has had an ankle and hadn't been able to go. Cam just hadn't. He's had a, just a string of bad luck and hadn't really hadn't practiced since I've been here, truthfully, in spring or in camp. And we sure do need him to get healthy. Uh, Var just had an incident in practice where he uh, had to have some stitches in his mouth. And it's just very uncomfortable right now to wear a chin strap down in his gum. But he'll be fine. And he was having a really good camp, uh, really good camp. Javaris, yep. I call him Var. I don't know, but uh, yeah, Javaris is. He was having a really good camp. Malcolm Johnson's dealing with a shoulder, and Austin Keys is dealing with a shoulder. I don't think any, either one of them are significant, um, but um, those are the guys that have been either limited or hadn't been able to go. You mentioned that uh, the defense you thought was was strong late. Talk mm -hmm. about the defensive front. How how have they done? Well, they're playing like 15 guys. It feels like, and they're just running them in and out. And um, you know, I think um, at the end of practice today, I thought they were dominant. They created negative plays on us that didn't happen early in the game, and um, excited about you know our edges have gotten better with with Falk and. Jalen and Elijah and Steven Sings and you know inside we're rotating a good group of guys there with Marcus and Jason and Mo and Bobby and um, Harris and um, Lawrence Johnson and Z Walker's gotten better. Um, we're rotating a lot of guys in there, so obviously we that's a good thing in this league that you can rotate those guys up front, but. The stuff we're doing is uh, it gives us problems at times because there there are a lot of movement that's going on and um, I hate to forget somebody but I'm I'm pleased with how they're working. Uh, Jarquez returned to practice earlier this week. What, what can you say about having him back and, uh, and and what he did today? Yeah, I mean obviously it's good to, good to have him back in the in the room and on the team and he plays the game hard and and helps us in that room become even better. So good to have him back. Uh, Coach, going back to the run game, uh, given how pleased you are with the running back room, how do you think that's going to affect what you've done traditionally from an offensive standpoint in terms of run pass balance going into game one? Well, they're not going to—they're uh, not going to let you do that. You know, you, defenses can absolutely force you into having an extra hat in the box, and I'm just—I uh, don't believe in running into those looks all the time. There's sometimes you—you you have to, but. Um, and so we have to be efficient at taking what they give us. That means somebody in the outside has got to win. And I thought we improved immensely from day one to day six. Today I thought we took a step back, and I've got to go watch the film and see why. Yes, you, um, the battle the offensive guard, have one, of the, one or two of the four or the five guys competing there stepped up yet? Well, I think you need four or five. So I don't give a I, I don't give a rat's tail who's first, second team. I, I don't I don't really care. I, I want we need all of them, you know. And if you're talking at guard, you know you got Tate and you got Jeremiah. And Muskie is is had a really good camp. Also, that was a good get. Cinda's coming on as a as a young guy too, and um, Harris and. I mean, we need all of them. You know, we're rotating them all in there. I'm forgetting somebody. Yeah. And uh, Stutz, of course, is one of the leaders of the team. And um, we, we're going to need them all before it's over. Coach, what have you thought about the pass rush up to this point at fall camp and then today? What did you see out of them? Uh, Jalen McLeod and Steven Sings have changed that uh, for the better for us. They can get after the quarterback. And, um, you know, I think – you got to have some third down packages where both of them are probably in the game because they probably are our most dynamic pass rushers right now. So we're better than we were in spring. We'll see how good we are when you get when it gets real. But 
I do know we're better than we were. A lot of the the players have have mentioned just the high tempo, especially of the offense um, in, in practice. How do you see that in the scrimmage now, and especially with I imagine um, the Heat also made that made that difficult. Yeah, early on it was. Uh, so I, I'm I'm all about creating adverse situations, um, and they struggle stopping our tempo early on. And I think we can go really fast when we want to. They struggled with that earlier, and then I called that off and wanted to see if we could execute. And then the defense um, pretty much dominated from that point forward. Coach, you mentioned the secondary as a position group you're going to watch closely uh, this fall when we got to talk to you before camp started. What did you see out of them today? How, how have they responded to that challenge? I think we've got to tackle better. We did not tackle well today when our backs got in the second level. Um, I do think we're talented there with our first group, and I think our young kids are going to be good. But they got to come on because we're going to need them um, in year one. But I do think our first group is, is made up of a solid group of players uh, for an SEC team. And obviously the corners, I think, are, are talented, and our safeties are also, I think. But we need depth there, and we've got to bring those young kids on. But we didn't tackle well today in the secondary. Yeah, you mentioned uh, Damari making a couple big plays, but just how has he stepped up over camp, especially when Jarquez was out and kind of taking that role? Yeah, he, he's had, uh, he's been one of the leaders. If you ask the team who one of the leaders are in that locker room right now, and he was elected to the culture council unanimously, and um, I think I just that speaks probably uh, as high as any mark you could give when your team says this is a guy that that drives the culture that we want. Uh, Coach, you talked about putting guys in uncomfortable situations to see how they responded this camp uh, so far. Uh, obviously, you started the culture leaders. Uh, how's that going? How have guys generally responded to, to the positions that you put them in? What well, kind of positions yeah. did you put them in? Well, we've had our Watchman series throughout camp, and you know, I started it, and then each offense, defense, special teams presents what that means to them. And, and so it's laid out there what we're saying and asking everyone to agree upon as to what that, what does that look like for us? And so um, will it ever be 100% buy-in? I don't know that you ever get that in any family, business, whatever. I, I think that's kind of an unrealistic expectation. But you start getting 80 to 90% buy-in uh, to that, I think you're on to something. And I'm pretty pleased to this point. I mean, we, we failed some tests. Um, in the adverse situations throughout, but I've never had a team that didn't. Um, some of our coaches, we've probably failed it too. And, you know, we have to own what, what the film says, and we'll own it today, both coaches and players, and, and come back to work tomorrow and try to clean it up and then hopefully have a great Monday and Tuesday of practice heading into um, to the start of school. Got one more question. Coach, anybody at linebacker stand out today? Uh, probably need to watch the film, but just off the off the initial, I would say probably Nixon created the most negative plays. Um, not saying the others didn't play well at times, but I just remember after we slowed things down, he seemed to uh, he seemed to be creating some negative plays for us. All right, coach. Thank you. Thank yep. You. Thank you, guys.